I am ready to start my work for the nation. In support for our people and for our fellow Mindanaoan president who has made history for our region. Today, I second the nomination of Senator Aquilino Coco Pimentel III for the position of Senate President, which will mark another historical milestone for all Mindanaoans, as today, three of the four highest positions of the land, the President of the Republic, the Senate President, and the Speaker of the House, all come from our southern region. Let this day usher a new dawn for our war-torn and development-hungry island of Mindanao, where the land of promise has become unbroken promises and the people have been apathetic to national government. Today, I congratulate Senate President Pimentel, who is also making history for being the first son to repeat his father's achievements in holding that position. No other father and son had held the position of Senate President in the last 100 year history of the Senate. Na sa inyong mga kamot, ang kaugmahon sa atong nasod, o tungod sa atong, o inyong kadaugan, o kadaugan sa atong pinalangga na Presidente Digong Duterte, katuo ko na makapot nato ang kalinaw o kalambuan sa atong region sa Mindanao o sa Tibok Nasod. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President, it is in our future is in His hands. And I believe, I strongly believe, that the future of our country with the hands of Senator Pimentel, Senate President Pimentel, and our beloved President Digong Duterte, it will usher a new dawn of peace and prosperity, not only for Mindanao, but the whole republic. Mabuhay ang Senado, mabuhay ang Pilipinas. Congratulations, Senate President. Senator Angara. Mr. President, mukhang batinat po sila. <laughs> Mr. President, I would like the body to recognize the gentleman from Sorsogon, the Honorable Francis Escudero, to nominate uh, a candidate for the position. So move. Senator Escudero. Thank you, Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. Senate President. Maganda umaga po sa ating lahat. Three years ago, I rose to nominate a friend to the second highest position of this chamber. This time, I stand to nominate him to the highest post. There are many reasons why I think he is qualified and deserves a promotion. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, the man I believe is ripe and ready for the Senate presidency is never a stranger to adversity. He is a man who would sail against the wind of public opinion and shun the safe harbor of populism if he thinks it will serve the interest of the public even if it damages his. He is a man, Mr. President, who in the past had opted to be right than be popular and pay the price for taking a principled position. My nominee has logged nearly a quarter of a century in lawmaking, three terms in the lower house and three terms in the upper house. With this tour of duty, I believe he has earned his purse to be the Senate leader. But it is not only length of service which qualifies him for the post, but the quality of work that he has rendered. We have known him to be a hard worker, one who keeps long hours, one who comes well prepared to committee hearings and floor debates, and one whose speeches are a joy to listen to. At a time when politicians live by the motto that early publicity, eternal publicity rather, is the price of incumbency, he is not after the soundbite that will land him in the evening news. Rather, he would rather work on sound laws that will create a better tomorrow for this nation so that we can all leave, leave it in a better state than before. We have known him as someone with a head for numbers and an eye for figures, whether tax, budgetary, or any of the female kind. <laughs> it has been said that while we can only read the pros in the laws we pass, he sees numbers in them. While we simply see the provisions, he will see the costs hidden in each section, then proceed to remind us of their burden to taxpayers. So whenever the tug of populism tempts us to pass measures without regard of their fiscal cost, he's there to ask us if those who will ultimately foot the bill can actually afford it. 
All of this he does in a manner that is assertive, but never, never ab abrasive. Resolute, but always respectful. He can improve bills without having to be insulting, as he had always used language that generates light than heat. He is a man who can shuttle between both sides of the aisle, who would not let healthy differences stand in the way of friendship, or disagreements damage the need to cooperate for the common good. He personifies the saying that one can disagree without being disagreeable. The kind who sadly is becoming endangered in, in the political landscape, scarred by scorched earth perpetual campaigning. My dear colleagues, the tradition in the Senate is that the election of its president has always been a contested affair. While hegemony might be the mantra in other legislatures, here we value the contributions of the minority as indispensable to the conduct of our business. Those who have come before us have always treated minority views as essential ingredients in lawmaking because laws to be good have to pass through the study and scrutiny of those who are outside the majority coalition. If fate will not smile kindly on my friend today, then again by tradition, he will have to assume the mantle of minority leader. If that be the case, then it will be my distinct honor to work with him in this Congress. But whether minority or Senate leader, he will have to perform either duties with the same set of principles, foremost of which is to be trustee of the Senate's historical role as an independent body answerable to none but to the laws and to our people. Whether minority or Senate leader, he will have to argue against policies which harms the national interest but advocate those which help. Whether minority or Senate leader, he will have to defend the institution so its constitutionally assigned task work assigned task will proceed unencumbered by attempts to erode it. This is not just the job description of the leader we elect today, Mr. President. It is actually the work cut out for each and every one of us. And among us here, I know of a colleague who fits the bill and is up to the challenges of the office and of the times. It is therefore my distinct honor, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, to nominate Senator Ralph Recto for Senate President. Thank you and good morning. Senator Angara. Mr. President, to second the nomination of uh, Senator Recto, may we recognize, may the body recognize Senator Antonio Trillanes for Se the Senator Trillanes is recognized. Uh, Mr. President, I uh, second the nomination of Senator Ralph Recto as Senate President. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, there are no other nominations. I move that we close the period of nominations and proceed to vote for the position of the President of the Senate. Is there any objection? There being none, the motion is approved. We shall now proceed to vote. Under Rule 2 of the Rules of this Chamber, the Secretary will call the roll for a nominal voting. Nominal voting. The Honorable Senators Angara. I vote for the top notcher from UP Law, Mr. President. Okay. Aquino. Pimentel. Pimentel. Aquino. Pimentel. Binay, Cayetano, De Lima, Rilon, Ejercito, Escudero, Gachalian, Gordon, Honasan, Hontiveros, Laxon, Ligarda. I vote for the bar top notcher and our esteemed colleague from Mindanao. I have to state the name of the bar top notcher and our colleague from Mindanao, Senator Coco Pimentel. Pacquiao. Angelina. I vote for my uh, schoolmate and my seatmate, Pimentel. Pimentel. I vote for Senator Recto. Oh. Recto. Soto. Soto. Brillanes. Villanueva. Villar. Subiri. I 
vote for my region mate of Mindanao, Senator Coco Pimentel. There are 20 votes in favor of Senator Coco Pimentel. And three votes in favor of Senator Ralph Recto. Senator Pimentel is therefore elected President of the Senate. Majority Leader. Mr. President, I move that a committee of three senators be constituted to notify the Senate President-elect. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Senators Drilon, Soto, and uh, Legarda shall constitute the committee to notify the Senate President-elect. I move that we suspend the session momentarily, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, the session is hereby suspended. session hall ngayon ang uh, pamilya ni Senator Coco Pimentel at uh, magkakaroon po sila ng family picture. Sa panayam natin kanina kaya dito o may manlangit, uh, sinabi niya na kasama ni Senator Pimentel ngayon ang kanyang ama na si uh, Senator at dating uh, Senate President Nene Pimentel. Nandito rin po ang uh, mommy ni Senator Coco na si uh, Bing Pimentel. Uh, kasama rin ng uh, senador ang dalawa niyang anak at uh, pati na rin ang uh, kanyang mga kapatid kabilang dito si uh, Commission on Human Rights uh, official na si Gwen Pimentel Gana na kanyang ate uh, ang isa pa yung ate na si Maripet Pimentel Brar na US based Nandito rin ngayong araw para magbigay suporta kay Senator Coco Pimentel. Si Dr. Aquilino Jack Pimentel ang uh, sumunod na kapatid ng uh, Senate President. Si, uh, ang Senate President po natin ay pangatlong anak ni uh, Senator Nene Pimentel. Nandito rin ang uh, dalawa niyong nakababatang kapatid na si Teresa Lourdes Pimentel at ang kanilang uh, bunsong kapatid na si uh, Lauren. I swear that I will well and faithfully discharge that I will well and faithfully discharge to the best of my ability to the best of my ability the duties of my present position the duties of my present position and of all others and of all others I may hereafter hold under the Republic of the Philippines I may hereafter hold under the Republic of the Philippines that I will support and defend the Constitution of the Republic of the Philippines that I will support support and defend, and defend the, the Constitution of the Republic of the Philippines. That I will obey the laws. And I will obey the laws. And legal orders. And legal orders. And decrees promulgated by the duly constituted authorities. And decrees promulgated by the duly constituted authorities. And maintain true faith. And maintain true faith. In allegiance to the Republic of the Philippines. And allegiance to the Republic of the Philippines. And that I impose this obligation. And that I impose this obligation. Upon myself voluntarily. Upon myself voluntarily. Without mental reservation. Without mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Thank you. Ready to start my work for the nation.